Alright. Today we're on day four. Factoring using zeros and graphing. Um, the notes today are uh, factoring using graphing. So pretty much match up. Right along with it. And um, the packet that goes with this is a three page packet that just talks about the things that we've been working on and it just also talks about how we solve um, using graphs. So today we're going to be really focused on not only factoring but how we solve. So today's objectives are we are going to factor and solve trinomials. We're going to do that using uh, all the methods and graphing. Okay, so if you go in your calculator and you go to the y equals, you can go to uh, uh, L1 or Y1 and you type in x squared plus x minus 2x minus 24. And then when you hit graph, you should get a graph that looks like this, roughly. Should be U-shaped. And it should, in some form or another, kind of look like that. Now, it might not look exactly like this, but you get my point. What we're going to be talking about today are these two points right here. These two points are what we call the zeros of the graph. And they are what help us solve when we factor. Now, if you notice up here, if we were to use the teach me how to factor, you guys would have went x, x, negative in the back, so plus and a minus, and then you would have done x plus 6 and x minus 4. And you would have told me that that was the correct factored form of the problem. So we're going to get into how we take this and end up with this picture and also how we get the answer to the actual solution. And that's another word for zeros is solutions or roots. And we've talked about that before. So let's talk about it. If we try to set 6x equal to 0, and we divide by 6, we get x is equal to 0. If we try to set negative 9x equal to 0, we divide by negative 9, we get x is equal to 0. So, if the product of two factors is 0, then at least one of the factors must be 0. So when we're solving for a, a quadratic equation, we can split the problem up and set each factor equal to zero. And then we'll most likely get two solutions, except for a certain case, certain couple cases, we won't get two solutions. But when we have an equation like this, x times x minus five is equal to zero, we set x equal to zero, and what's in the parentheses equal to zero. Well, this one's already completed, and for this one, all we have to do is add 5, so x is equal to 5. Therefore, we know that the correct answers to x times x minus 5 is 0 and 5. And notice how I put those in set builder notation, so we're going to keep them in order from smallest to largest. <clears throat> the same thing happens here. We have 3g equal to 0 and g plus 10 equal to 0. We divide by 3, we get 0. We subtract 10, we get negative 10. So the correct answers are negative 10 and 0. And again, we want to use the set builder notation. Same thing happens when we have a completely factored uh, <clears throat> polynomial and we want to go ahead and just take what's in the parentheses on the left, set it equal to 0, take what's in the parentheses on the right, set it equal to zero. X is equal to two. 
Now we add one first and we divide by four so that we get x is equal to one fourth. So we're going to put this in step builder notation as one fourth comma two. Go ahead and give this one a shot and then uh, pause the video and then when you're done go ahead and check your answer with my work. Okay, so we get negative two, three is the answer to the bottom one. All right, so if you understood how to do all of that, you are ready to complete one through eight. Um, I said to do the odds only, so you guess you're only doing one, three, five, and seven. And then uh, when you're done with the whole sheet, I'll check this all out. So in order for us to solve quadratics, we can do two methods. We can do our factoring which is what we're going to go over on the front, or we can use a graph, which is what we're going to go over with the last four slides. So let's go over uh, solving using uh, just straight up factoring first. We have to make sure that we set the problem equal to zero. So if we set the problem equal to zero, then we can factor to a, in order to create a product. That, that requires us to find a GCF. So the GCF here is 5x. So once I delete the, um, wow, once I um, took the 5x out, I divided both this and this by 5x, so I get 1 minus 8x. Set each side equal to 0, so x is equal to 0, I, I subtract 1, divide by 8, x is equal to 1 eighth. Set builder notation, 0, 1 eighth. In this one, greatest common factor is x. Set both sides equal to 0. This one's already done. Subtract 1, divide by 7. x is equal to negative 1 seventh. So negative one seventh comma zero. Go ahead and do, uh, well, let's talk about what happens when, you know, obviously it's not equal to zero. How do I set it equal to zero? Well, I'm gonna move something to the other side. When I subtract seven X, I now have X squared minus seven X is equal to zero. Now I've done what I needed to do. Okay, so now I can take the GCF, X times X minus seven, and I get uh, 0 and 7. Same thing here. Negative 12y squared plus 4y is equal to 0. 4y is my GCF. So I get net 4y times negative 3y plus 1. And my answer is 0 and 1 third. Come. Same thing happens here, except for now I have to use teach me how to factor. Parenthesis, parenthesis, d, d, plus in the back means a double up, plus in the middle means they're both positive. The factors of 10 that add to 7 are 5 and 2. Set it all equal to 0. So d plus 5 is equal to 0. D plus 2 is equal to 0. My answers are negative 5, negative 2. Go ahead and finish these three. Now remember, before you can move forward, it has to be equal to 0. Go ahead and pause the video, try those three, and then once you've done it, check the video, watch me do the work, and you'll know whether or not you're doing it right.